Hi, and welcome to Comsky Corner. Today we're going to be talking about defining, creating, and refining algorithms, focusing on structure diagrams, pseudocode, and flowcharts. This video is specifically for the new OCR GCSE Computer Science course. However, it is applicable for most exam boards. Before we get into the production of algorithms, let's begin by looking at structure diagrams. Structure diagrams are used in top-down design, which is a modular design approach. Modular design is a technique for breaking down a complex system into smaller components called modules. Modular design has the same advantages of decomposition. Each module can be developed independently and then recombined to form the project as a whole. Top-down design, also known as stepwise refinement, is a modular programming technique where a program is split into smaller and smaller subprograms until each can be represented as a self-contained module. Once the program has been decomposed, structure diagrams, also known as hierarchy charts, are used to visualize how the subtasks relate to one another. At the top of the diagram is the main program. At the next level is the subproblems of the main task. And at the next level is the subproblems of these subproblems, and so on. For example, you could be tasked with creating a renting application. Within this, the program will need to do things like generate a quote, record the hires, and generate the invoice. To generate the invoice, the program will have to do a number of other steps, such as get the hire details and calculate the hire and damage costs. Now let's have a look at what is involved in developing algorithms. So as we mentioned in the previous video, an algorithm is a logical step-by-step -step process or set of instructions used to solve a problem. Algorithmic thinking is a principle of computational thinking. It's thinking about a problem in terms of how we get to a solution through the clear definition of steps needed. For a more in-depth explanation on algorithmic thinking, have a look at my other video on computational thinking. There are three main ways we can write an algorithm. Pseudocode, flowcharts, and writing code in a high-level programming language like Python or Java. Generally, the algorithm is written and planned in pseudocode or as a flowchart, and then turned into actual code to be executed. Therefore, we are going to be focusing on pseudocode and flowcharts in this video. To write an algorithm, you must first identify the inputs, outputs, and processes. The inputs is the data that is entered into the system. The outputs are the data that is sent out of the system and the processes are the decisions made within the program. Clear documentation of these things are important when writing an algorithm, as it makes it much easier to understand the algorithm and make changes to it. In the exam, when asked to write an algorithm, you may do so in either pseudocode or as a flowchart. So let's start off with pseudocode. Pseudocode is a simple way of describing a set of programming instructions in a syntax that is close to plain English. It resembles many programming languages, but without any extra details. There are many different ways you can write pseudocode depending on your preference, such as using statements like if and end if, or by writing in simplified Python or Java. As long as the logic of your code is correct and it is understandable to a reader, and you don't mix the different methods up, the way you write pseudocode doesn't matter too much. If you would like me to make a video going into depth on how to write pseudocode, let me know in the comment box below. Here is an example of pseudocode for an algorithm that allows the user to log in to a system. The program first asks the user to enter their username and password. Using a while loop, the program continually asks the user for their username until it matches the one stored in the system. It then uses an if statement to check to see if the password given matches the password stored in the system. 
If it does, the program outputs that the user is in, and if it does not match, it outputs incorrect. There are advantages and disadvantages when writing a program in pseudocode like this. The advantages are that, as we just saw, the algorithm can be quite easily understood. The pseudocode can also be quickly and easily converted into an actual programming language. Lastly, as we mentioned before, syntax errors don't matter and changes can be made easily. The disadvantages of pseudocode include the fact that it can be difficult to see how the program flows, which could cause logic errors. Also, pseudocode can be time consuming to produce. We mentioned in the last slide that most algorithms contain inputs, outputs, and processes. Can you identify the inputs, outputs, and processes in this pseudocode? Pause the video here and have a go. The inputs in this program are the myName variable and the myPassword variable, as the program is taking this information in from the user. The outputs are the green boxes as we are printing the information in the brackets to the terminal. Lastly, the blue box shows one possible process as it contains an if statement, so a decision is being made here. We could also write an algorithm using a flowchart. A flowchart is a diagram that is made up of symbols. We use an oval to denote the starting and stopping of a program, a parallelogram to indicate the process of inputting and outputting data to and from a program. We also use a rectangle, which denotes a process, and a diamond that indicates a decision being made in the program. There is also a symbol to represent a subprogram, such as a function or a procedure. Lastly, to connect all these symbols together, we use an arrow. Here is an example to see how we can connect these symbols to make a flowchart. This flowchart shows an algorithm that continually asks the user to input their password until the password entered matches the one stored, at which point the message correct is outputted and the program stops. There are some advantages of writing algorithms using flowcharts, including, as we can see, the fact that it's easy to see the program flow. Also, flowcharts follow an international standard, so it is easy for any flowchart user to understand the algorithm, no matter where they come from in the world. There are also some disadvantages associated with using flowcharts. For example, for larger projects, the diagrams can become huge in size and therefore quite difficult to understand. As well as this, any changes that need to be made may mean the diagram needs to be changed a lot and this may be difficult to do. In this video, we have started looking at defining, creating and refining algorithms, including how we use structure diagrams, pseudocode and flowcharts. If you have enjoyed this video, Please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. See you next time. Bye!